Hello everyone, my name is Ajmer Din and welcome to my channel Analyze with Ajmer Din today 25th November 2020 and it was an examination of advanced auditing and professional ethics for November 2020 CA final examinees. This is the old paper with me and uh, 30 marks comprised of MCQs and 70 comprised of the detailed answers. So uh, related to MCQs, we don't have the question paper with us. So uh, I have given some hint statements in the description box and it will get updated as soon as possible by today only and uh, you can just write down if you have any query about the mcqs in the comment box and also the suggested answers of those questions which were directly asked from uh, practice manual or um, from directly from the study material are also being updated are also get got updated on my blog so the link is given into the description box you can just go to it and go to the blog and you can just uh, see what should be the suggested answer as per the institute study material if i analyze the question paper um, some uh, questions were given into detail but uh, the main point was asked in the bottom uh, uh, in the closing statement for example if i talk about first p it was related to what are the general steps for conducting risk based audit so it could be shortened down to the one statement only and answer can be given which could not affect the case study as well so risk based audit uh, comprises of four steps first it, uh, first is understanding the operations and identify and prioritize the risk then uh, the risk which is determined then determine what uh, what can be done uh, what are the uh, residual audit risk which can be there and then manage the residual uh, residual risk to the acceptable low level and step number 4 is that uh, to uh, to inform in the appropriate reports similarly some questions were uh, based on the case study and logics for example first c was related to the uh, directors they were reimbursed with the personal nature expenditures so as an auditor how will you deal with it second a was related to the factors which uh, that may affect the identification of an appropriate benchmark so it should include this was a little uh, tricky question but it was directly from the annexures of the standard on auditing so uh, the uh, the factors are like the elements of financial statement for example assets liability equity and revenue whether uh, there are items which require the attention of the users for a particular entity and then the nature of the entity and the life cycle of the entity the entity's ownership structure these all can be act as a factor which were material then uh, second b was related to the uh, uh, were asked that uh, uh, corporate responsibility under sox and the corporate social responsibility under companies act are to be are same the statement is given but uh, on the bottom it is written that please evaluate this statement critically so of course both are different one is related to the americans uh, law and americans act and section number 404 i believe and one is related to the companies act 2013 the uh, sox 2002 uh, sarbanes auxiliary act 2002 uh, which requires a public listed company to uh, to implement assess and ensure effectiveness of the internal control which is uh, similar to the ifc ifc of the uh, ifc of the uh, companies act and csr is completely different which is related to the contribution to the local society and the proportion of profit to be given out there first c uh, second c was again a new question and it was related to the current scenario audit it's audits going on and it was related to pros and cons which could be there um, while working remotely and conducting audits remote remotely on the uh, working uh, remote working models virtually so pros and cons of course the time saving or uh, physical difficulty in physical uh, physical inventory valuation or taking uh, the conducting of physical verifications these some um, were pros and cons which could be ha could have been written over here coming to uh, third no third a explain the circumstances under which risk can arise or change so uh, what i'm trying to say that uh, institute is trying to mug up more and more is trying to you know write down more and more case study and then in the bottom they are asking the simple question which they can do simply by asking 
and the bottom line for example in uh, for second uh, a I, I told you and third a explain the circumstances under which the risk can arise or change so they don't need to write down these or five six lines it all it is always waste of time other unless and otherwise these lines impact the uh, answer of the uh, examiner uh, of the uh, candidate so risk that uh, risk can arise you know due to change in circumstances for example changing in operating environment new personals are appointed you know rapid growth in the technology rapid growth in the uh, uh, rapid or significant growth of the company new technology arising new business model arising corporate restructuring of the company these are all the factors you know which can be there uh, which can be written in the third a coming to uh, third b was related to the uh, uh, one of the announcement from the uh, council of affairs and on i think 4th april 2016 where they talked about responding to the 10 tenders and uh, in the same they said that uh, there are particularly two uh, set of uh, Tenders first exam first is that which have the exclusive area of practice of chartered accountants in this in that uh, the chartered accountants are not allowed to respond if minimum fees is not given if minimum uh, wherever minimum fees of assignment is given prescribed in the tender document itself then member may participate in such tendering process otherwise they are not allowed and uh, the entity who want the chartered accountants uh, uh, services they can uh, directly contact with the ICI with their database and B part was B category of things where chartered accountants or any other profession can apply then the tenders are floated by the uh, by the authority can be applied so in that a case if uh, the council had further decided uh, on April 2016 that suitably issued a guidelines on the council or under clause one of part two of six, uh, second schedule of charter contents act and any member who contravents any of the provision and guidelines are uh, are are liable for the disciplinary actions against section number 21 now it comes to the uh, third c was related to the uh, uh, circumstances that may warrant the revision of terms of uh, engagement so it was quite a simple and direct question and uh, it uh, the answer of the same could be um, any indication of you know entity misunderstanding of uh, objective or a recent change in the senior management significant change in the ownership and a change in the legal or regulatory environment or a change in other reporting requirements or the financial reporting requirements then of course revision should is uh, prescribed and revision should be done fourth a was related to the going concern matters and fourth b was related to your depreciation so of course companies are allowed to uh, follow different useful life or residual value if appropriate justification is given which should be supported by the technical advice so management are allowed but they need to show the technical advice of the same to the auditor and if completely ignoring the uh, the useful life it's also allowed in my opinion and also in the guidance note of the institute which is given so that can be taken care of 4c was related to the limitation of scope and 5th uh, a was related to the uh, was related to the a firm which can which is which is trying to participate as cost evaluation so of course as per clause 4 part 1 uh, second schedule there is some restriction but in this case there is no restriction because this is allowed uh, fifth a is in my opinion is no misconduct fifth b was related to, uh, fifth b and fifth c was uh, related to your uh, the company further uh, condensed that it should correct and ensure whether employees are well so it was uh, of course actuarial, actuarial uh, uh, the valuation should be done for the uh, for even if it's uh, it's depend on the future circumstances but expenses should be uh, booked and leave encashment and utilization of the same should be calculated based on the actuarial reports sixth a was related to audit shall not uh, um, of course auditor should not provide an access to their working papers and um, SA 200, 230, SQC 1 and clause 1 part 1 of schedule, second schedule was to be written over here so it was mixture of all these uh, standards and and uh, schedule uh, clause 1 part 1 of uh, second schedule
6 uh, B was related to the peer review and selection process I think and C part was related to the India's requirement where asset held on sale asset held for sale is shown under inventories of course it's a wrong presentation assets that meet the criteria of asset held for sale to be measured at lower of carrying amount or the fair value less cost to sale and depreciation of such assets to be stopped and seized and asset which means meet this criteria should be shown separately under the balance sheet and result of the uh, and the results of the discontinued operation to be presented separately under statement of profit and loss so i believe the uh, this appropriate this was not appropriate to show under inventories and uh, what are your views just let me know through the comment box and suggested answers of the all these discussed are updated on the my blog so please do visit on the same thank you very much